Welcome to Inventory Planner. We're going to walk through crucial account setup that you should pay attention to when first starting your Inventory Planner account, go through major workflows to create a purchase order, including accurate forecasting for demand from your customers, and finally walk through reporting available in Inventory Planner. First, let's set up your account by clicking on Account in the lower left-hand corner, then Settings. First, you'll want to be sure that you've connected all of your sales platforms, your inventory management system, or other platforms that integrate with Inventory Planner. If you are using more than one platform, such as Shopify along with an inventory management system such as TradeGecko, you will want to only connect one of these platforms so that information is not duplicated within Inventory Planner. Typically, if you are using an inventory management system, that is the platform that you will connect to Inventory Planner. Once you've connected all of your platforms, let's take a look at warehouses. This will be either actual warehouses or locations that you have set up on your connected platform. Any locations that you have set up on these platforms will automatically show as warehouses. If there is information syncing to Inventory Planner that you don't need, you can simply disable that warehouse so that you don't have that detail showing when you're looking at forecasting and other reports. When considering your warehouse setup, think about if it would be helpful to see your total demand across your entire store, all locations, all warehouses. If that would be helpful in creating your replenishment recommendation, then you'll want to create a combined warehouse. If that is helpful, click the new combined warehouse button at the bottom of the screen, enable which warehouses, should be contributing to your combined warehouse. Name your combined warehouse and save. Now that we've configured our warehouse view so that we see detail for each location as well as combined warehouses that we need, when we first go to replenishment, we'll see each location shown as an overview. If you have a combined warehouse, that is typically where you'll start your replenishment in order to create purchase orders to your supplier. Click on Variance to see SKU level detail for this warehouse. The forecasted demand within Inventory Planner is based on the date range showing in the upper right hand corner. This means that all customer orders during this time will be considered when calculating the customer demand or the rate of sales in order to forecast how much additional inventory is needed. We can see additional information about how the forecast is created by clicking on the eye icon under the details column. On the replenishment and forecast tab, we can see detail about the forecasting method being used, what the date range is as a reference for this item being forecast, as well as a breakdown of how we come to the recommendation for additional units to replenish. If you would like to customize your forecast settings, we'll do so here in the forecast settings tab by enabling custom forecast settings. And here we can adjust information such as the forecast method being used. Note that there is a description below the forecast method, which will change when we select different forecasting methods so that you can see date ranges being referenced, what trends are taken into consideration, and other crucial information about the forecasting method. This information can be done on a variant level here in details. It can also be done in bulk here on the replenishment screen. We can select items that we would like to update by selecting the entire page, then coming to the bottom with bulk actions. Here we can set the forecast settings and we will see the same options showing for these items and we can update the forecasting method. Let's walk through how the replenishment recommendation is generated. We start with the forecast, then take into consideration the current stock on hand, anything on order, which are items that are on purchase orders within Inventory Planner, and anything transferring in between locations. The replenishment recommendation will then be the number of additional units that are needed in order to cover continued selling during the lead time, as well as covering the full days of stock once that new order arrives. Lead time is the time between placing your purchase order with your supplier 
and when you receive those items into inventory in your warehouse. Days of stock will be your ideal stock cover. You can also think about days of stock as the purchasing frequency. If we have new orders arriving that will cover 30 days, then that means we will be placing orders every 30 days. One of the most crucial aspects to set up an inventory planner, therefore, is getting accurate lead time and days of stock information into your account. This will ensure that you're seeing accurate replenishment recommendations. You can set up lead time and days of stock in a number of different ways. One, by using bulk actions, selecting set lead time and days of stock. Another option is to import this information from a spreadsheet. We'll select import at the bottom of the screen when no items are selected here with the check boxes and select replenishment. And another method to update lead time and days of stock is doing so on the vendor level. We'll go to the vendor section from the left side menu, select a specific vendor, and then we can set up lead time and days of stock for each one of our locations. If you are using a combined warehouse, this needs to be the lead time for the entire process, starting with placing your purchase order with your supplier, going through receiving that at your primary warehouse, and then finally transferring smaller portions of the original order to secondary locations. The lead time for other locations will be only the amount of time that it takes to receive either from the vendor or from the transferring warehouse. Different merchants have many different methods for deciding what will be on a purchase order. Some like to group purchase orders by vendor. Some will want to prioritize items even within a vendor by looking at the retail value of the replenishment that needs to be ordered, the forecasted profit, or other metrics. Note that by clicking on the gear icon in the upper right hand corner that you can pick and choose which metrics will show on the replenishment screen by enabling them when we click on it. Then you can drag and drop them so that they appear in any order that you need them to. Now that we have replenishment recommendations, let's create a purchase order. We'll select items that we want to go on a purchase order. We can do this by individually selecting items with checkboxes. We can use filters so that we're viewing all items associated with a particular supplier, or we can look at categories, tags, or other attributes in order to filter and see all the items we want on one purchase order. Now that we've prioritized our items to put on the purchase order, we've selected a few items and at the bottom of the screen, we'll click on new purchase order for three variants. When we're creating a purchase order, from the replenishment recommendations in a combined warehouse, we need to choose an actual warehouse where these items will be received. The combined warehouse is a virtual warehouse. Therefore, we can't receive items at this virtual warehouse. We need to choose an actual location. Select one from the dropdown. As in replenishment, we can pick and choose which metrics or which pieces of information will show on the purchase order. Verify that you have the correct vendor selected, correct destination warehouse, and the accurate expected date. By default, the expected date will show as today's date plus the lead time, but this can be customized. If there is additional information that you need to add to your purchase order, click on settings, and then enter this information. For example, a custom reference number for your purchase order, any notes to your supplier, a payment date, you can specify a currency for your purchase order, as well as your shipping and billing address. If you need to add additional items to your purchase order, you can do so by clicking on Add Variants, searching for items and selecting them in the pop-up dialog box. Once you've customized your purchase order and have all the information on it that you need to, click Create at the bottom of the screen. And now we have our purchase order. This next step can be different based on the connected platform that you've integrated with Inventory Planner. If you have connected a sales platform such as Shopify, BigCommerce, WooCommerce, or others, you can receive stock directly in Inventory Planner. 
We can do so by typing in the number that we've received and clicking on Save. We'll see a date stamp including the number of units received and which date. You can also push received stock to your sales platform. We will see information about the current stock, number of units we've received, and what the new stock number will be after the update. If you have connected an inventory management system, then your saved purchase order will be synced to that platform and you will handle receiving on your connected platform. Therefore, your workflow will be creating a purchase order here in Inventory Planner, saving your purchase order to your connected platform, your inventory management system, then all changes relating to the purchase order will happen on that platform, including receiving, editing, and canceling the purchase order. When setting up Inventory Planner, we suggest checking the vendor section to make sure that all of your suppliers have accurate information within Inventory Planner to make ordering easier. If you have connected a sales platform, you may need to import your vendor information, either by individually adding a new vendor or importing this from a spreadsheet. If you've connected an inventory management system, Inventory Planner will pull your vendor information directly from that platform. We still recommend reviewing this information to make sure that it's accurate so that you can easily create purchase orders. There is additional reporting available in Inventory Planner that can help with optimizing your stock levels. The first one to check out is the overstock report. Overstocked units are calculated based on the forecasted demand and the settings that we customized in the replenishment recommendation. The overstocked units are units that are forecasted to be on hand at the end of the planning period. The planning period is lead time plus days of stock. So at the end of this time, we are forecasted to have a number of units overstock. When viewing this report, we can prioritize by the retail value of what's overstocked, the number of units, and there's additional information under labels indicating how overstocked an item is. All of this can help in prioritizing how quickly and how aggressively to move out overstocked items. Inventory KPIs within Inventory Planner is a very flexible report. We can configure this by warehouse through a number of different dimensions. Here we'll look at categories. We can customize the time period that we'll view and we can compare time periods. Here we are looking at November to December compared to the prior 30 days. We can also click on the comparison time period to look at the previous year instead of the previous period. Click on the gear icon to customize the metrics and information showing in this report. Now we can see trending information by category. We can see the number of units sold, how the different time periods compare to one another, revenue over these time periods, and how those compare. You can also view stock history within Inventory Planner. Here we're viewing the stock history by month. We can also configure this to view by week so that you can see the number of units, the cost value, and the retail value of your stock. The delivery schedule can be helpful when coordinating with your warehouse or receiving department. This will look at open purchase orders and we'll schedule them based on the expected date so that you can see how many units are arriving. In this case, we're viewing the information for vendors so we can see who will be sending how many units and when they are expected to arrive. Just as the delivery schedule looks at future purchase orders, the Good Received Note report will look at purchase orders that have already been received. We can look at information including units, cost, and retail value of any purchase orders that re were received during this period of time. The Compare Warehouses report is helpful when you have multiple locations and want to see if there is available stock in one location that could be transferred to another. To use the Compare Warehouses report, we'll select one location at the top of the screen. This will be our destination location. We can see our replenishment recommendations. This is based on the forecast settings set up in the replenishment section of Inventory Planner. Then we will compare this 
to other locations. Now we can see replenishment needs for each location, any of the current stock, and then available stock. The available stock metric ensures that you are not creating a stock out in one location just to make sure that items are replenished in another location. Available stock will look at what is available over and above any sort of customer demand needs at that original location. Once we're looking at the available stock and we see that there are replenishment needs in our destination location, we can easily create a transfer by selecting these items and then at the bottom of the screen, creating a new transfer. We'll verify the warehouse information and create the transfer. As with purchase orders, adjust any information needed and save your transfer. Now that we've walked through crucial setup for your new inventory planner account, how to create a purchase order, as well as reporting information that's available to you, let's walk through where you can find additional information if you need to find out more about any of these features. The chat button in the lower right hand corner is the best place to go. When we click here, you can see the glossary of terms, which is a full list of any terms that you'll find in inventory planner, definitions, formulas, and related information about where data points are pulled from your connected platform and what is calculated with an inventory planner. You can find troubleshooting articles if you feel the forecast or replenishment is wrong. This can walk you through different forecast settings, crucial account setup that may be affecting your forecast or replenishment. You can search our help center to find out more about forecasting. And you can chat with our team by starting a new conversation to tell us about what information you need to know and how we can help.